Guy in Israel writes to me, Hi Paul, I love it that Octave Records has brought a whole new subject for the community to ask questions about. Yeah, me too. It just opens up a whole new field for, for me to learn, for you to learn together, trying to get to the heart of what really makes music come alive in our house. And part of that's going to be the recording. Has to be. Not just the playback, but the recording too. Anyway, so Guy asks, um, is reverb artificially added to the mix? And if so, why? Isn't reverb a room acoustic phenomena that we all try to tame to get rid of? Mm -hmm. I get it that zero reverb sounds unnatural and therefore makes perfect sense to be added to headphone listening or car listening. But when listening in untreated rooms, isn't the result an excess of reverb or a combination of reverbs? Well, you know, that's a really interesting question. I'm not quite sure how to answer it, except that when you listen to a recording, regardless of whether it's in headphones, in your room, it is an entity unto itself. And it kind of has to work unto itself. So when a singer sings in, in the, the, the parlance of recording studios, dry, meaning there's no wet reverb, yeah, I know, you gotta learn a whole new vocabulary, right? <laughs> it can sound, in the right circumstances, it can sound terrific. I mean, we just did one with this young lady, Caitlin, and we tried a little bit of reverb on her voice. She has the most gorgeous voice, and I like to record solo vocals on a Bloomline single capsule stereo microphone. And man, it just sounds like she's right there in the room. And as I add any kind of reverb to that, it starts sounding a little phony. But that has nothing to do with the room because that sound, that wh whatever we capture, the dry, the wet, the partially, you know, moist is that between the two, it's going to sound part of a whole that is presented in the room or in the headphones that you're listening to. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, yes, our rooms are reflective to some degree if they're not over damped. And it is reverb that we're trying to tame. We don't want to get rid of it. We don't want our room too absorptive at all because that sounds muffled and it sucks all the life out of the music. There's, and we've talked about this before with diffusers and ways to tame the reverb. And once you get that, you have the ability to hear the recording as it was made. And that's the idea behind it. So when we add a little bit of reverb here or there, it's to enhance the spaciousness of a particular instrument or a voice within the recording and has nothing to do with the room and all of that. So I, I think that's kind of a scattered answer and I apologize for that, but it's hard for me to put exactly into words because you're mixing up two completely separate things, room reverb, echo, which is a completely separate subject to whatever it is you're playing. But the reason in recording that we add reverb is to add a little bit of depth, a little bit of added space, because that's what it sounds like if it's properly done, like someone's in a bigger space. And that's the reason we use reverb, but we don't always do it, as I had just said in the one recording. So, All right, thanks. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.